Hello, everyone, and good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hope everyone is doing well this fine Tuesday morning, February 22nd, 2022. Uh, a couple of things here before we get into today's topic. Um, make sure, guys, if you are not sure about your grades, if you're concerned about your grades, if you're not sure, you know, how to do certain assignments, make sure you're reaching out to me. Make sure you're asking questions. Um, of course, ask questions to me, ask questions to your classmates. Uh, make sure that uh, if you're checking your grades periodically in in Canvas and you're concerned about your grades, make sure you're reaching out to me. Let's try to work it out now instead of waiting until uh, the end of the semester. OK, we've completed unit one now. We're moving on now to unit two. I'd really like to get, you know, every, kind of everyone, if need be, all caught up and continue on with our new topics. OK, so please make sure you're reaching out to me if you're concerned about your grades. I have started reviewing your uh, your essays and I'm in the process of basically putting together uh, different reports for your feedback. OK, one is going to be in the form of your Word document. I'll leave a few comments in the document itself. Uh, I'm going to generate another Grammarly report, so you'll get another report based on your final draft, so you can kind of compare and contrast both of your reports. And uh, you'll also get a rubric. You'll also receive a rubric with a score uh, for for the essay. So I'm, I'm working on that. Um, it will take me a little time. I'll try to get that done as soon as possible so that you can get that feedback <clears throat> and you can receive that feedback. All right, um, this unit, unit two, we're changing focus. Uh, we talked a little bit yesterday. We talked about the educational, um, I'm sorry, the uh, e-portfolio. The e-portfolio is part of our our grade, it's 10% of our grade. So uh, this week, I'd like all of you to begin working on your e-portfolio. I, I understand that we're just starting, so I'm not expecting to have a lot of information in there. Um, but I think this <clears throat> this week is a good time to begin finding a host, finding some page, some website that you feel comfortable with so that you can begin developing your e-portfolio. <clears throat> Make sure you're reaching out to me if you have some technical issues or questions about, you know, even if it's difficult for you to, let's say, decide on which which site is the best. Those are things that we can talk about. OK, I have no problem uh, discussing that with you either on a one on one basis or small groups outside of class if you need uh, some additional feedback on making these decisions. It is a fairly important decision in that the idea is that you stick with the one website pretty much, um, you know, in the future so that, you know, you don't make a decision today and then next semester decide, no, well, maybe, you know, another Google Sites, for example, would be better than Wix or, or, or whatever. So make sure that you're reaching out to me if you want to have that discussion, uh, if you want some feedback. Uh, before making a final decision. OK, but again, I think this week is a good time to begin starting as uh, unit two. We're going to be developing several products. OK, so we're going to have probably six different writing assignments that we'll, we're going to be including in unit two that we're also going to be including in our e-portfolio. Once you get your final feedback from your um, your essay, I would suggest taking a, a, a review of that feedback, making any additional changes if you want before uploading it to your before uploading it to your um, your e-portfolio. OK, the second thing, um, let's see what day I think it's March 5th. I I'm going to I'm going to be giving a talk. At a Mex TESOL. Uh, regional conference here in Aguascalientes. 
And of course, all of you are uh, encouraged to go. I'll send the link if I haven't already. I think I sent the link. I'll send it again in uh, Teams. Um, but what I'd like to do is uh, include a few group pictures of uh, the three groups that I currently have this uh, this semester. One of them being you guys, of course. And so I wanted to see maybe tomorrow. Today we're going to have a, a discussion here, and I, I hope that I can get more of you to turn on your cameras and we can have a, a, a discussion as we introduce this next topic. But tomorrow I'd like to have a group photo to get as many of you as possible to be so kind to turn on your cameras so that we can see your lovely faces and I can get a screenshot to include uh, in my presentation. I would very much like to do that for each of the three groups. So it doesn't matter, you know, what you look like. It doesn't matter if you comb your hair or not, uh, but it would be nice to have uh, a group photo. I probably, in fact, I won't be able to include all of you because um, it only shows, at least on my screen, maybe because of I'm on a laptop, uh, I probably won't be able to get all of you in the picture, um, but we'll do the best we can, and uh, I'll try to get as many of you in as I as I can. So I'd like to do that tomorrow, uh, trying to give everyone a fair warning, fair warning. Uh, but yeah, it would be nice to have a group photo. Otherwise, it'll just be your avatars, which is is okay. But again, uh, being able to see you live is much better, uh, of course, right? So. Today, I want to talk with you and ask you a few questions related to educational philosophy and would like this first part of today's class to be as conversational as possible. If you'd like to turn on your microphones at this time, if you'd like to turn on your webcams, be nice to see you. Go ahead and do so. Today, we're going to be talking about educational philosophy. Talked a little bit about it yesterday when I introduced ePortfolios. But I'd like for you to reflect on some questions. All right, today's activity, today's discussion here this morning is all going to be centered around a lot of questions, reflective questions on your views on education. Today's activity and our discussions today does not, they do not require you to investigate, to read up on anything uh, other than just the topic of educational philosophy. This is more about your opinion. This isn't more about your beliefs, your viewpoints, your perspective on teaching and on learning. You as a teacher, what is your philosophy? What is the, the philosophy that you have that relates to your students, to your learners? OK, and, and maybe some of you are teaching already and you have those experiences and you've been thinking a lot about this. Maybe um, maybe you're you haven't started teaching professionally yet. But you will. And so maybe thinking about in the future. Right. What type of beliefs do I hold? In terms of how students learn best. What role do I have as a teacher? Right. These are some of the questions I want to talk with you again this morning, just to kind of introduce this topic for us to start thinking about some of these questions. So again, if you could please turn on your camera, turn on your microphone, it would be really lovely to be able to have a discussion with you. I know it's eight o'clock in the morning, but it's OK. It's all right. Go ahead and turn on your cameras, turn on your mics, please. And what do you think? What kind of What's your role? How would you explain your role as an English language teacher? What do you guys think? What do you What do you think? Jump right in. You don't have to if you want to raise your hand, go ahead, raise your hand. If you, you want to just jump right in, go right ahead. What do you think? How would you describe your role? Have you thought about what role that you either take or should take, right? Even think of some of the teachers that you've had in the past. What roles have they taken? 
Do you agree with those roles? Right? There's no wrong answer here. This is just a reflective type of discussion here. What do you think? Jump right in. I'm sure all of you have a lot of opinions on this. What do you think? Well, I um, I had the chance to work with kids uh, right before we came back this semester. And I enjoy how they are always asking questions. They're always thinking how everything works. And I realized that for me, I would like to be a teacher that fosters creativity instead of just answering everything and trying to, to be someone who has or tries to have the answer for everything. Instead, uh, push everyone to, to try to answer their questions that by themselves. Yeah, so thank you, Oscar, for that. Um, what do you think, and this is for everyone, is there a difference between the role that you might take when it comes to teaching children, let's say, and I, I don't know what age group we're considering, let's say, I don't know, 10, 12, 14 year olds, versus the role that you might take when teaching adults? Is, are there any similarities or differences in the role that you, that you might take? What do you think? Probably, I think with adults, they start like thinking like if if the, the teacher doesn't answer their questions, they kind of think you are not good enough as a teacher. Probably. OK, and whereas children, how would they look at it differently or similarly? I think with with children, they just they don't think too much about that. They just keep keep asking questions. Yeah. But if you say, "Well, I don't know," or you know, you you come and they the kids are asking you questions and you don't give them an answer, do they would they act differently if you either maybe ask them a follow up question? where you were trying to encourage them to come up with a, an answer. I don't know, what do you think? Is there is there a difference in the, in the roles that, what that might look like in a, in a situation with children versus one with, with adults? What do you think? And this is for everyone, okay? This is, these are open questions to everyone. Does anybody agree, disagree? What are your thoughts, guys? Well, um, for example, with kids, I think if you make them see that you're interested in their questions and you want to find the answer together with them, they might feel uh, motivated. And um, yes, motivated and they would feel like you're you're with them you're you're joining them in their let's say scientific research okay sorry guys uh, my of course my computer just decided to uh, reboot all by itself so give me one second i'm on my phone here one sec <clears throat> Okay. All right. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, sorry about that. I don't know if someone was speaking. I missed probably the last minute or so of that. Um, so if you want to repeat what was just said or if anyone wants to jump in again, what do you think is are there fundamental differences here between between these roles that we would assume taking into consider classes that are for children versus adults? What do you guys think? Um, Paulina? Yes, um, I think, yeah, it's completely different. I have been working with adults and with children and children, they just want to play like all the time. <laughs> and so the, um, the learning process has to be very, I don't know, like creative. And with adults, I don't know. I think it's, it's not the same. So creativity, right? Think of <clears throat> not only your role as, let's say, a facilitator, but think of your role as a designer, an instructional designer, a designing uh, of, of experiences for your students. And you mentioned creativity. So how would you create a classroom experience, an educational experience? Thinking now of this keyword of creativity, what would that look like for adults? What might that look like for children? You mentioned games, but can you add, can you talk a little bit more about, and for this is for anyone, about this idea of creativity, what that, what that looks like, and what approaches might you take as, as a teacher? Yes, I refer that um, maybe use different activities. Like, um, I don't know, kids need to be doing different things, not just um, be, I don't know, doing the same thing because they get bored. And I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Do you think, and this is again for anyone, do you think that that, that also applies in some way for, for adults? Do adults get bored doing the same thing? And, and if so, how, how would that be different or similar? Again, trying to compare classes for children versus classes with adults. I, I could ask a very uh, open question like, how do you think, how do learners or how do students learn best? What do you think? How, how would you answer that question? What do you think? How, how do you learn best? You're a student. You've had a lot of experience being a student. You'll have even more experience in the future being a student, as we all have and as we all will. How do you learn best? And the way that you learn best, it, would you generalize and say, that's probably how my students learn best also? Or would you say, well, maybe the, the best way that I learn may or may not be the best way that my students will learn. What do you think? Any opinions on on that question? Well, I consider that activities for both children and adults must be interactive and students must be active, but um, the activities still must be different because uh, if we apply the same like funny games with adults as with children. Adults might think that um, classes are like, um, like for kids, <laughs> they might mm -hmm. not be uh, connected with those kind of activities. So that's also important to consider because we want to make uh, fun activities for adults, but they are not like really engaged to those type of activities. 
All right, so a couple of key words that stood out for me that you mentioned, uh, Fernando, is one being active, like being an active learner. And you also mentioned the word engage or engagement. So we want students to be engaged. We want students to be active. What does that mean? Let's say we can choose, you can choose either context either for children or for adults, but how would you engage, how are students active or could they be active in, in a class? And think of your own class as you're preparing and thinking about how, you know, what you would do as a teacher in the classes. How would you have your students be active specifically? And let's think of some specific strategies or behaviors. What do you think, what comes to mind? What do you think? This is for anyone. And if uh, Frida, I think, has yes. a hand up. Yes. Yes. Um, I think a nice option will be for so we can attract the students to the class. It will be like to have an like an interesting topic they want to like talk about or they want to learn about something they're interested in or something like like it's exciting something or competitive in games including games uh, presentations interesting activities something they can touch something they can see mm -hmm. like they will like and they will participate yeah and and how would you find out or how do you know what students are interested in or how could you find out what students are interested in by asking, I don't know, maybe, or seeing how they move, how they, how they learn, because everyone learns in a different way, mm -hmm. everyone learns in a different way, and we can know if they're visual, they're auditive, they're like by hands, and something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, can, are they kinesthetic learners? Are are they auditory, right? Visual learners, right? Thinking about maybe the learning styles, or at least finding ways to bring in a lot of a variety of learning styles into your practice, into your teaching practice. Certainly, asking them. This is one of the hardest things I think is really knowing what students like. We say, well, <clears throat> we could ask them. But we also need to take into consideration a lot of variables, right? Like how, what kind of activity, what's the purpose of the activity, what's the content, what's the subject matter, what kind of technologies or materials are being used, if that is an obstacle or a challenge. But think of your own teaching practice. Think of the technologies and the materials. Think of different theories that apply to your own teaching practice. Thinking of, you know, we've had, unfortunately, we've had the last couple of years, we've been in a situation where most of our teaching and learning, virtually all of it, has been online. So for better or for worse, we have been exposed to educational technologies. And you probably have some opinions and viewpoints on the role of technology and what it has or doesn't have on your teaching practice. So another question might be something like, what's the role of technology in the classroom? And, and think about your philosophy as not only applying to the pandemic, Think of it more broadly, like you have now, you've, you've had two years of experience with technology, perhaps you know, more so than what we were used to before the pandemic, but still the question remains, what is the role of technology? Let's think of, you know, we don't know what the new normal is going to be in the teaching classroom, but we can, we can 
guess. We can think about it and say, well, it might be like this. But what do you think? What does role, what does technology have in uh, in your own teaching practice? What do you think? If any. Have your views changed over the last two years when it comes to your philosophy and what you think technology, the role that it has? Or is it pretty much the same? Maybe it hasn't changed it at all. Any any thoughts? Any opinions? Just jump right in, guys. If you don't uh, just turn on your mics if you have and your cameras if you want. What do you think? What's your what's your belief? What's your opinion on the role of technology? in your teaching practice, teaching English language learners. What do you think? Any, any, any uh, opinions? I know all of you have, have opinions on, on these types of questions. What do you think? What, should we just... Disregard technology completely. Think of overall, generally speaking, in your practice, what's the role of technology in terms of helping you do your job as a teacher and or, or what the students, what you ex would expect your students to be doing in your class? Well, I was I was thinking as a student. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my my grandpa is here. <laughs> uh, I was noticing that that now technology is uh, should join the the classroom. For example. When I was in secondary school, our teachers used to tell us not to use our cell phones or or any type of of advice. But mm -hmm. now I think teachers should encourage students to use them for um, learning purposes. Yeah, I mean that's going to be one of uh, the decisions you're going to need to make. Should Cell phones be used in your class. Maybe the school that you're working on has their own philosophy. Maybe they have their own policy. And maybe they'll decide for you. If they don't, then that's going to be a decision, something that you're going to need to consider. All of these questions that we're talking about today relates to the types of questions that you are likely to be asked if you're ever in, a, in an interview. Okay, imagine you want to work at a particular school. You, you probably will have an interview where you, you'll have a, a discussion. They will ask you questions. They may ask you. What do you, what do you think about using cell phones in class? And you probably want to avoid a type of answer like, oh, yeah, I think it's a good idea. Right? They're going to want to know why. They're, they're going to want to know how you would use them, why you would use them when you would use them, where would cell phones be used, right? They want to know your philosophy. These are questions that, that are very typical. They want to know who you are, not only what your skills are and your knowledge, but your philosophy, your vision. Well, what do you think? Because each school also has a quote-unquote vision, right? They have their own policies, but they, are, they have a mission, they have a vision, and they want to make sure that those that they hire, the teachers that they hire, are also going to be 
um, they're going to adapt to their vision as well. So they're going to ask these types of, of questions. Today, what I'd like to do, guys, and it's unfortunate now, I'm still trying to get my computer. It's analyzing. It's going through something. So I wanted to share my screen and um, show you what our activity I'd like for us to start today uh, is. And unfortunately, I don't think I can do that on my phone, to my knowledge. I don't know if I can share my screen on my phone. So I'm going to try to walk you through today the activity. And uh, please jump in if what I explain is not is not clear. So if you are on my if you're in Canvas, if you're on a desktop computer or or if you want to open up the app on your cell phone. Go to module number five. We're in week five, module five, and you should see just below ePortfolio, you should see an assignment called Educational Philosophy. If you open up this assignment in Canvas, you should see a list of questions, links, and I also have a section called Actions. So the actions, these are the steps that I'd like for us to take to complete this activity that I'd like for us to start today. This is an individual assignment. And let me see, give me, give me one second. Let's see if I can open this up on another device. All right, so there are some readings that I'd like for you to kind of skim through. You don't have to read all of these, but just kind of glance through, skim and scan uh, some of this information to get some ideas about educational philosophy. But essentially, to write an educational philosophy, I'd like for us just to think of different questions. Think of different questions that, that you want to answer. And those answers, I would like for those to be brought into your educational philosophy. So the way that we're going to develop our educational philosophy is through questions. And I've included a lot of questions in Canvas in the assignment. And some of the questions we brought up this morning, OK, in our in our group discussion. Um, there are additional questions that are listed that I would also like for you to do, take a look at. There are 10 questions that I've listed. Some are how questions, some are what questions. There should be some why questions that you might want to consider. But I'd like for you to go and open up the Word document in Microsoft Teams. If you go into Microsoft Teams under week five, under files, you should see a Word document um, that says educational philosophy questions. If you open up that, that document, I'd like for you to add your full name. And it doesn't matter where you add your name. It can be anywhere in that list. And just below your name as a level one heading, I'd like for you to write out the questions that you want to answer for your educational philosophy. Now, the questions, I'd like for you to make sure that they are as a level two heading. Your name should be listed as a level one heading. The questions that you want to answer for your educational philosophy should be a level two heading. Now, the Word document that I've included should have those headings already set. You shouldn't have to change those, but for if for some reason it does get changed, just make sure that the questions themselves are a level two heading. I'd like for you to answer the questions that you want to include. This is your choice. You can choose how, however many questions that you want, and you can choose which questions that you want. But I'd like for you to answer each of the questions just below the questions themselves, just below the level two heading. Make sure your answers are normal text. 
Make sure the answers are normal text. Why, why, do, why is this important? Because you should be able to, to expand and collapse the questions just below each of the questions that you have included in the Word document. I should also be able to collapse each of each of your names, all right? Each of the information that falls underneath each of your names, okay? So again, your full name, make sure it's a level one heading. Make sure the questions are level two heading. You decide on which questions and the number of questions that you want. But our goal here is to develop a two to three paragraph educational philosophy a two to three edu uh, paragraph educational philosophy. Now the paragraphs, these, this is not an academic exercise. So we're not, we're not writing body paragraphs. There are no citations. This is just your beliefs. There are no wrong answers, all right? This is your belief. This is what you think to these, about these questions. Okay, the readings that I've included as an assignment are there just for you to become familiar with what an educational philosophy is, but please do not include any citations, no references, no citations or, or references according to APA. This is not an academic exercise. It's kind of a reflection. Think of it like a, a reflection. And I'd like for you to be very careful with the order. Now, what I've, in, what I've explained in the, in the instructions in Canvas, I'd like for you to come up with uh, or identify where you want to, to put the answer to your question. So let's say you have five questions. Well, let's say eight questions. Let's say you have eight questions. And you want to put two of those questions in one paragraph. You want to put, let's say, four of those questions in a second paragraph, and what's that, six? And you have maybe two questions for a third paragraph. I'm not sure if my numbers are right, but you're figuring out, okay, which paragraph should each question go in? So in the Word document that I'm sharing, at the end of each, par uh, at the end of each question, in parentheses, indicate a number number one, a number two, or number three to indicate which paragraph, one being the first paragraph, two being the second paragraph, so on. And then use a lowercase letter, A, B, C, to indicate in that paragraph, which question would you like to answer first? So for example, if you have a question and you want it to be the very first question that you answer in the first paragraph, then you would put one, a at the end of the question in the Word document. Okay, so you might have 1A, 1B, 1C, 2A, 2B, right? 3A, 3B, for example. So um, bear with me, ma'am. Of course, my phone is dying. Give me a second. Let me, geez. One second. Let's see if I can get in before I, my phone dies. Okay, um, so, all right, does this make sense? It would be easier if I could share my screen, uh, but do you see what I am uh, asking here in the shared Word document? Does that make sense? I'm not sure if I can hear you guys. Does that uh, does it make sense what we're doing here today? Working in the Word document, coming up with the questions, and how I'm asking you to include those in the Word document. Can you explain the letter code again, please? All right. So let's say that you have. All right. I'll use a different example. Ten questions. Okay. You've decided on the ten questions. And and the 
you've got the the questions listed. Okay, the the number, the numbers and the letters are to indicate how you want to the order in which you want to present those answers in your educational philosophy. Your educational philosophy is going to be like a, a mini essay, basically. It's going to be a two to three paragraph text. So my question is, all right, what I'm asking you to do is to indicate after each question which paragraph you would like to put that question uh, not the question, but the answer. Like, where would you want to include that answer to that question? So if the you have a question, you know, that you've chosen and you want to start your educational philosophy, then, you know, that's what the first question is that you want to answer. Then you would put at the end of the question one to indicate the first paragraph and then a to indicate that's the very first Send, that's the very first answer that you're going to include. The answer to your question could be one sentence. It could be two sentences, could be three sentences, probably no more than three sentences, but it, it could be more than one sentence. So those one, those two or three sentences, right, that you included in the Word document, you would add that to your own education philosophy, right? Uh, later, we'll... You know, right now, the first step is to just find the questions that we want to answer, answer those questions, and then indicate the order in which you want to include the answers to the questions in an educational philosophy. OK, so this 1A would be the very first answer. If you have another question and you answer that question, you would maybe you want to follow up and include that next. So it'd be one B. So again, the one, the number indicates the paragraph, the first paragraph, second paragraph or third paragraph. So everyone's going to have either a one, two and three or just one, two. If you have just two paragraphs, the letters A, B, C, that's going to indicate the order of the sentences in that same paragraph. OK, so A would be the first answer in that paragraph. B would be the second answer in that paragraph. C would be the third answer in that paragraph. That would be like, for example, 1A, 1B, 1C. OK, so it, it really is going to depend. What I'm asking you to do is to as you're answering the questions, and you can do this at the end, you don't have to come up with the order first. In fact, I wouldn't do that. I would just say, okay, which questions do I want to answer? Okay, write those down in the Word document. Answer the questions, and then ask yourself, okay, what would be the best way for me to organize my answers in a cohesive and coherent text in two to three paragraphs what would make more sense? How do I want to organize these answers? And in the Word document, this is what I'm asking you to think about and write out to say, okay, this is the first answer. This is the second answer. These two, these two answers or questions go in maybe the second paragraph. That's what I want you to think about as you're answering these questions. So this Word document is going to tell me a lot about which questions you want to answer and how you want to organize your, your thoughts. And I'd like for us, you and I, to, to work on and, and like maybe I can give you some suggestions if necessary to say, okay, why, does, why are you answering this question before this question? We can have that discussion if it's necessary before you go to writing out your educational philosophy. OK, so this is this is going to be our first step in writing instead of just jumping right to just writing an educational philosophy. I want us to think first of which questions, how many questions in the order of those questions and answers. Before we begin writing the 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 educational philosophy in the form of two. Two to three paragraph text. Okay, does that does that make sense? Yes, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Any other questions, guys, about about the what we're doing about this test? Again, you decide which questions. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but um, in the Word document, we have like already like the format for three questions. But let's say that we want to answer like six. We just have to like copy the format and paste it so we can have like the space for six questions. I exactly. I just put three questions just to as a starting point. You probably will need more than three questions. In fact, you will need more than three questions. So yes, just copy either copy and paste it, or if you know how to change the style to a level two heading, um, that's fine too. But yeah, just uh, add however many questions that you need. You go ahead and add uh, the 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 level two headings. And and then answer the questions just below. Yeah, I just included three to kind of get started. Um, but yeah, you'll probably need more than more than three to complete a two to three paragraph, um, you know, paragraph uh, construction. I'm not even I'm not going to even say how many sentences you need in each paragraph. This is what I want you to to think about. Each paragraph should have a purpose, uh, uh, an idea, a main, a main idea. It should have a reason for being in a separate paragraph. So this is also an exercise in figuring out how do I want to not only come up with the, the answers to these questions, but how do I want to group these answers in two to three paragraphs? OK, but yes, to answer your question, yes, please add more headings as you need to to address the questions that you that you want to answer. Oh, OK, teacher, but um, in this uh, Word document that that you shared, we just have to answer the questions, right? But like we have to like start like constructing our paragraphs in a separate document, right? Like for well, yeah, I don't want. Yeah, I don't want you to start writing. Please get the the actual educational philosophy. OK, the first step is to add your questions. And your answers. Um, in the Word document so that I can kind of give you some feedback. I'd like for us to have a discussion first that you, I give you some feedback before you begin writing your educational philosophy. So um, I would start first with the Word document and 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 then we're, we'll we'll pick up this activity tomorrow in class. But if uh, you want to start writing out some questions, start coming up with some answers. Uh, we can in class. I can give you some feedback on on the organization. I'd like for us to think very carefully first about the organization before you jump into the the actual text. But tomorrow I'll explain what we need to do for the actual educational philosophy in the form of the two to three paragraphs. For right now, let's just focus on the questions and the answers. OK, thank you. OK. All right, you're welcome. Anybody else? Any other questions, guys? All right, tomorrow we will pick up where we left off here today. I'd like we're going to spend today and tomorrow on our, our educational philosophy on uh, to, to be Wednesday, then Thursday and Friday, we'll spend time on uh, the next text, which will be a purpose statement. So be thinking about questions. Maybe before class, have a list of uh, some questions that you want to include. Uh, and uh, tomorrow we'll focus on the answers. We'll focus on the organization. And, and I'll try to give you guys some feedback on the organization here before we move into our educational philosophy. All right, guys, we'll stop there for today. And uh, again, we'll pick up where we left off tomorrow uh, in class. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Talk to you tomorrow.
Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Thank you.